we continue with this amazing enterprise that has seen people get rich. Daily income is the way to go. Coming up on Seeds of Gold. Now, a cow milks for about 305 days, about 10 months. So when the pig in us reaches 7 months, we stop milking it. So we put it the other side. It is always cost effective for dairy farmers to have silage ready available on the farm. When a cow eats food and drinks water, the digestion process starts. GEMS helps us to dissect the different stomachs of a cow and it's important for every farmer to know this. A cow has got, has got four stomachs, we call it four stomachs, whereby when the cow eats the grass, it first goes into a storage stomach. I want to make it as simple language as possible so that everybody will understand it. That stomach is more or less for what would be fermentation and storage. So the cow would start in the morning eating like grass, just pushing in, pushing in, pushing in. As it is pushing in, because of the temperatures and the bacteria inside that stomach, it is like fermenting that grass or which is eating or the food it is eating. Then from that stomach, the cow will come sit down and chew the cud. When he starts bringing back and chewing the cud. From there it goes to a second stomach. Now that second stomach is where you find uh, uh, the villi. It has got villi like hair. Uh, those who eat uh, offals, gender, that sebusa thing is the second stomach. There it, 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 will, it will try to start removing the nutrients that it requires from the grass it has been chewing then that is how it is making milk. Then from there it goes to the other stomach, uh, which is like uh, pepper. It has got so many segments just to squeeze out as much as possible all that it has been chewing before it is passed to the fourth and last stomach which pushes out the, the manure. So now, when you see a cow directing, running stomach, you will know, you can start thinking that maybe it didn't go through. The process was either hastened or it had to go through this in, in an hastened way, so it didn't give dry enough. And also when it gives so dry a manure, the, the cow dung is so dry, then you might think that it didn't have enough water. So it has got to be a balance of the two. But that's what we talk about, the five stomachs of the cow, but <laughs> it is not one of the like that. With the increasing number of land fragmentation in Uganda, and especially so in the central region, the market for insemination has increased. Many farmers across board are opting for zero grazing and breeding their animals using semen. The biggest market would be in the beef farmers on uh, western Uganda, in uh, the Ankole region. Uh, but we are we have started seeing bigger markets around uh, Uganda region, Masaka, Luero, Mokono, going towards the east. Because these have been really more hit with the land fragmentation, so now they are looking at really getting the best animals around. People in western Uganda, they like the game, but in the middle of the road, once he gets a bull, he says, I think now I can start using this bull since it is out of the other cement so i think it is going to work as good sometimes they are frustrated and then they come back after four years you know that is going back and you know we are selling a promise when you are breeding an animal it takes nine months to breed and two years to come back to, for you to, to breed it so you are looking at three years to see what what we sold to you to be looking like so my greatest clients are getting towards eastern uganda and around uganda now around the Central Masaka, Luero, and the, the nearby districts. Information is power. A farmer needs to be knowledgeable about a cow's calendar and the signs of a cow on heat. This will help the farmer not to serve a wrong animal. So, 
how can a cow on heat be identified? A cow on heat would be wanting to mount other cows. And uh, in the beginning, the onset of heat, you would find a problem of knowing which cow is on heat because it will be mounting and not allowing to be mounted. So eventually it will be mounting, mounting, mounting. So you give it time. But when it stands to be mounted, because when it is trying to mount a cow which is not on heat, it will move away. So you will say that now which one of the two is on heat. But a cow standing to be mounted is the cow which is on heat. That is when they are two. When it is one animal, when you go into the barn or into your cow shed, you see an, a cow which is alert. All ears will be up. It will be wanting to smell on you, wanting to move towards you. And you might even think that my cow is becoming aggressive, but it's trying to create friendship. That is the cow which is uh, showing. That those are some of the signs which will show you that the cow on heat. Number two, a cow on heat will discharge some clear mucus. Now, the word clear, as clear as water, but it is mucus. It is being discharged. When that mucus becomes whitish or frosty, then it has got some diseases. That is another science which we are not going to go into here, metritis and the like. So it is not, not only mucus but clear mucus. Then that cow is having good heat. We also have a, uh, what would be a calendar. On this calendar, in the, in, in, in the small letters we have got next heat. If a cow comes on heat on the 8th, huh, these calendars we give them to farmers for free and we try to get them to understand them. Cow coming on heat on the 8th, it will come back on heat. In case it didn't conceive, it will come back on heat on the 29th of this month. After 21 days, the cycle will be coming back. So we want the farmers to know when the cow will come on heat. And if it conceives on the 8th, it will deliver on the 14th of, of uh, March, the next year. So the farmer should know. You remember when they told you that the dry animals, when they are two months to delivery, you've got to have records and a calendar to know when that animal is going to deliver. A normal person will not know when. But this gives you an average. It always fails plus or minus, not more than five days. Mr. Luirimba has projections of milk production for his farm. Currently, my production averages around 15 liters. When I say average 15 liters, you'll have going up to 25 and as low as uh, 12. So the average will be around 15 liters. And uh, what I would target and this is because of the different fluctuation of nutrition we are having and uh, uh, the type of timing we are having in making silage and uh, maize seasons and the rainy seasons changing here and there. We are having quite a number of challenges. But if one could have enough financial capital to create, create enough feed for the animals for the year, you, are, you have a steady target of getting 40 liters of milk from each cow from what we are bringing here. If the cow can eat what it's supposed to eat in good time, it should be able to get a 40 liter per day in, in, in the production. But also that depends on how pure the cow is getting because you breed one getting into different grades from, from crosses to get into a pure breed. But other is the target is, also my other target of breeding is to get good enough heifers for marketing for that farmers can access having enough good material. This would have been done by our data, Nagric Data Bank. We have got enough animals coming in. I'm understanding they are importing even more. But we need to breed as much as possible so that we can have enough heifers for farmers so that farmers don't waste time on animals which are not productive in their, in their farms. The farmers are able to see the difference in milk production with this method of insemination and feeding cows well, as the manager here explains. This is the first group. This is the lactating group, the group that gives us milk. 
it has two categories. There are these that are giving us milk right now, and there are the dry ones. The dry ones are the ones that have been stopped. Now, a cow milks for about 305 days, about 10 months. So when the pig in us reaches seven months, we stop milking it. So we put it the other side. We don't feed them while milking them, but the required feed is put here. Because um, initially we used to, 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 to corrupt them so that they give us milk. We used to give them milk as they were being milked. But now, each and everything is put in this, is put in this trough. We put dairy meal here, we put molasses, we put uh, hay mixed together with silage so that it eats from there. When it goes to the parlor, it is strictly milking. Moses is a trained farmer that has taken on the new technologies of using insemination. Yeah, in our training, we are not advised to take, to take a cow to be mounted by a bull in the village. Yeah. So we use that fissure. At times when you have money, you can use the 60 semen. Well, we, try, we tried one time to use the embryo, but it never conceived. But it, we use the insemination. There are, there are now people preparing to enter in the dairy. And many, many people think they have to be with many cows. But if you can get at least a cow, it can give you 20 liters, like this one I have. I used to have many, but I go on selling because as we do business, we need money. I think so. So, but at least if a cow can give you 20 liters. And I've told you, we are not looking at milk as the only source. But for those who think milk is the source of getting money from you, at least you need to have a cow which can get you 20 liters of milk or more. To Moses, a cow has a lot more to offer than just milk. He and his family are living in a relatively good life and have minimized costs of production plus living. Uh, I'm one of the few trendy farmers in Uganda because when I started dairy farming, I was trained by, by Haifa Project about, uh, about um, 15 years behind. We've undergone through trainings in very various sectors uh, to the extent of even adding on value to the product from, from the cow. Thus, we have, we have uh, another, another association where we take our dairy and we make yogurt. Yeah, so in the dairy, we are not looking at milk as one of the important products from the cow, but there are even others. People, people are overlooking it, like urine and the dung. Uh, first of all, here we have biogas. This is where the, the, the mixer, I mean the, the digester is inside. And this is the tube that takes the the biogas, the biogas up. So this is an extension. From here it goes to the slurry pit and to the compost. Down there it's where there is compost. Out of it we make fertilizer. And in urine uh, we add on value addition and we make uh, fertilizer from it. We have also silale. Silale, we in the silale there are several things you can use out of it, like a feeding to the pigs. You can use it for feeding chicken. At the same time, you can take it to the garden. Now, as you may look at around in our garden, it's the cow that has changed this garden, and you can have food as much as we can. When we return, learn how to determine when to inseminate a cow.
Maria is another dairy farmer who recently embraced artificial insemination and with the help of the experts, her business is on the growing curve. Okutani koko londe ente zino, nalisa aga la kulonda ante. Hati mama wangi, nga ine ente waka. Ente yo, yari ajisibia kutali. Olu ira nerujia neruku hata. Olu ya yocha, farm. Ente nga mweri nebaji okiram, neja. Nga ina kabibi katonyo ya kakaza la kawichi. Kakati wa yajia ni munga mati tukagulide nga mata. Na gamba asijia kabina munga tukagulide nga mata. Nenta niko kagulide nga mata. Nga mweleza sente zigula nga mata. Eventually nkulu nefa. Na asigaza kabibi. Nenka gulide nga mata. 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 Nenka gulide nga Kati weka kula, na ngamba tuwale enteyo. Ne njigana, na ina ngamba, ente negenda kuunzita, haba ntono waga mwote ange ente nzise. Eh, ngamba umukadeba nae. Kuunze mojimpe. Nesoka na njiru ndida wali wa mganda wangi. Kati wetuwa jawano, wetuwa vayo mchifuga ntu jawano. Netuzimbe chiyomba. Netujireta. Ne inge iva mwama tamatono nyo, ente nga nganda. Ntene, nganja gala nyonyonyo nyente ya mama wangeji ya mpa. Kuna kulikuwa msawa mita msawa kasozi. Na ngamba tunda katako. Ne munga sija katunda. Na ngamba tunda. Nga mwaja jawa na kavuma. Katako sika gala. Kapa mwevi kopo bibiri. Tunde ente. Ne munga msawa toda wano. Ente no mama wange ya jimpa. Tundu na mama uya kuwa tengo ulimulosi. Olumu na kera ne kakama ni kavamu echi kopechi. Na nyiga. Ne mpita akagula. Na kampa mmilioni ya mwemituwa lo chenda. Nen tu kaku untuk masa jalan ente jaga la million satu. Ah, nama gambar cici. Ente mau gueti. Nang gambar ye, nama gambar di kanal. Wen kuat million ibiri. Nang gambar cici sebab kagai dono nyesa bayo. Ane ni ganjo nang masa jono banang. Nen kau mau ano? Nen masa kau sese nang gambar cici tu foi na sentimen. Karena muka cici tu fon zidin. Nau million ya muci pun. Ah, nang gambar itu tezu gula tu biveko. Eh, ni asyik tak. Nen tezu kau million ni anggap muka cici pun. Nang gambar mu. Hmm, ni nak buat ente. Ni mkuu bidha sister wangu ni mgao mani, mpa ayo sente ngule nte, na mpa sente, ni nyonge rako, ni ngule nte ya milioni sato, ni njia tano. Yeye yazala umwa na ubo, kakati, na juu nda ni ngule nte, kati umwa na guli wenye gutu onda, ni nyonge rako ni zali zivudemad, ati ni ngule nte, kakati ono yazadori. Ono ya zadori, ono tanawa kuzala achari mguwa kwa. Sizi tuwa la kunume. Sizi tuwa la kunume. Musawo lucha muzi, ya zi wakisa. No mula lo musawo wamita uino. Ino ya kaji wakisa, eriguwa kuligena kweza mieze vili. Eneguwa kuligena kweza mieze na. Kati, ene ntevamu lita, lita zi kumina nya. Olu naku. Eno loku bange egwa kuligenze eva mulita mu sambu olunako So kati ya matago tugatunda tugaguza abantu abantu ganywa so akafe tunywa amata <laughs> Being into no zilia muddo tugusimbi tu, tu, tu Era ugulenge la guguli eri, tu simbi omudo, omu la guguli eri. So tu teme ebisa gazi, netuera ntuziwa. Engeje tu intulima, kwe tulima lumonde, amalagala, nga tuziwa. Despite the business growing by leaps and bounds, challenges are inevitable. Challenges are quite a lot of them. Number one, you know this semen is supposed to be kept in liquid nitrogen at a temperature which is negative 190 degrees. Yes, I know the best temperature would be negative 52, but we don't have any, any other substance which is around that temperature. So we use liquid nitrogen. The production of liquid nitrogen is, is limited and is not one thing which one would venture in because the inseminations are not yet um, as many as uh, would be for somebody to come in with a liquid nitrogen plant. So we are dependent on mainly government and the virus research institutes to get us liquid nitrogen. 
which sometimes you would find machines breaking down and we have a problem of storage. We, can, we have even never reached a time of going as far as Kenya to get liquid nitrogen just to come and keep the semen. When that semen is in liquid nitrogen, it can be for, you can keep it for 100 years. It won't get spoiled. But just a day out of liquid nitrogen, just putting it out of the tank and you leave it there for five minutes. If you put it back, you're, you're, you've already killed the, the sperm cells. So the main challenge is liquid nitrogen. Number two of the challenges is uh, awareness of our farmers. Farmers tend to want to jump on quite a number of different issues. That's why we find that our development sometimes is going, getting stagnant and the like. Uh, you find the farmers, after going and listening to, to the Americans, they want to do embryo transfer. Embryo transfer is good. But one, it, it can also cause a bull. You might get a bull out of an embryo transfer. Two, preparation of the animal is not easy. You're supposed to prepare that animal uh, for you to get a success of the embryo transfer. And three, it's very expensive. But you find farmers are insisting, for me, I want this, I have my money. Yes, you have your money. In Uganda, we have got very few veterinarians who can do ET. I myself have gone through the training of ET. But uh, it is not a one man's job, one man's game, like you do with artificial insemination. It goes with so many things, even the farmers got to be participatory. So you find that is a challenge. Then the, another challenge we are finding is uh, um, different policies which are coming in. Government policy on breeding hasn't been very clear. And uh, that one is being taken advantage by seven of the players. Challenges that he, is that is the pricing of the milk because in the villages a litre of milk is a thousand shillings. To the middle man it says two thousand so you can see the difference. But, but if you can do other things hmm? because now when you look at the ingredient that given to the to the to the animals, it is more costly. But again, milk is an ingredient can be fed by the animals, not only even to the crops. Yeah. So now this is the highest time that you people have to think very wisely. Instead of selling milk, they do other things from it. Maria is confident she cannot live a day without a cow at home and encourages all to take a leap of faith and start. So, Simanyo ba wa sobolo kubera oru na kungate wali wonte. So kati abali mi abato ba ino kwe kiri dizam. Kwa bali chintu bo chigeza ako atengo chia gala. Ochi sobo. Subia kusoma nyoro oza. Subia kusoma nyoko bana fetwa tadi kina pola we tu tio we tu tio. Ne kati daba we tuli. Next week on the show. Cow number four three five. On one page you can see a lot of details. So we can see that on this page, cow number three, cow number, cow number four, three, five, uh, last gave birth on this date. This is Gayaza. So someone will come at your farm and tell you I want to steal Gayaza. For you still to, to be able to sell Gayaza at 10 million, you have to show the record. So this app, you're going to use your phone. It has the age, the cow number, the number of, of, of uh, liters of milk it produces. So at the end of the day, you will be able to sell out your cow at the desired price. <laughs>